Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, helping you make your game nights better. Tonight I'm hoping to help by letting you know what you get in the box with this. This is a rather he heavy box of the Belgian Beer Race, a board game about traveling around Belgium tasting all of the amazing Belgian beers. As a beer connoisseur and craft beer fan and someone who knows what a Belgian Trappist Ale is, I'm really looking forward to checking out this game. This is something right in my wheelhouse. Now, I do have to thank Mark from Grand Gamers Guild for getting me a copy of this up from Gen Con um, for the purpose of review. So thank you, Mark. So not too much to say about this one. Uh, I'm just going to crack it open, take a look at what you get in the box. It's 30 minutes per player. This is a bit of a Euro game. It's a move around the map and try to try have as many beers as you can, visit as many places as you can, as well as being social when you run into other beer drinkers. So I'm going to crack the shrink and we're going to take a look at what you get in the box. All right, here you have the box for Belgian Beer Race. A nice big box, ages 14 plus. Sounds terrible what's happening inside. Uh, the back of the box is in multiple languages, so I'm expecting the rule book and everything else to be the same. Let's take a look at what's inside, though. That's way more interesting than what's outside. It is a big, loose bunch of stuff. It has been so long since I have seen a board game without a box insert that I'm actually kind of in shock here. I'm like, wow, everything's just kind of dumped in here, which is fair. Uh, the box is obviously thicker than it needs to be, but I think they were going for that standard board game box. I do appreciate this, so there is at least one way to organize all of this once I've sorted through it. Um, so, we've got little tiny discs here in wood and yellow. I'm not going to bother opening them up. I'm just You can see what they are here. You have unique dice made for this game um, with various symbols. These are rolled when you're trying to hitchhike, as well as when you're trying to ride the bus to see if the bus shows up on time and so on. Um, like that basically means you get your public transport, but it takes you two turns longer to go where you're trying to go, and that's when you're trying to hitchhike. That means you did not get a ride. Hitchhiking is the cheapest way to get around, possibly the fastest or the slowest. So you have one of these dice, and the whole thing with hitchhiking is if you fail, you can try again, and you get an extra die the next time, and then you can try again, and you get an extra die. So we have some Hobbit-sized cards here. So these are scoring cards, like victory conditions. There are some end-of-game scoring cards. All right, so here we have some uh, Hobbit some size cards, half size cards. These are various scoring cards that you'll be able to claim throughout the beginning of the game. The ones come up in the first round of the game. And then there should be twos. And then there's some end game scoring ones as well. Um, not sure what this particular one oh, it's It's based on the difficulty. You can play for either three days or you can play the long game, which is five days. And this is just a reminder of that. So these are various different scoring things that you can try to score at the end of the game to score points by hitting these various brewers and so on. Um, whoever's the highest, whoever's the most drunk at the end of the game gets five points. Um, and so on. Whoever has the most beers, whoever's collected the most brown beers, things like that. Really clear-looking iconography, though note I haven't played this yet, so I don't know how effective it is, but I do dig, like, I could read that from across the table very easily. Okay, unfortunately, there's nowhere to put these when I put them back in. So I'm going to pause for a second to grab one of these to at least toss these in. All right, this I thought was very cool. Um, this is the brewery book. This has nothing to do with the game except the theme. This is actual information on actual breweries in Belgium, which is just going to make me want to go to Belgium um, and check out all of these. This will become my checklist if we ever take a trip to Belgium. So I thought this was really cool. Um, it's in at least two different languages here. That is a nice thick book. Just kind of a cool bonus. Um, as well as it looks like there's some iconography summary here on the back. Oh, there literally is a checklist in here. Wow, that's cool. As a beer fan, that's really neat. Then we get to more game important stuff. Like the instructions, not in English. Still not in English. There we go, in English. Uh, rule book's not as thick as I was expecting. Oh, some small text. Not a huge fan of the white text on dark background. List of the components we'll be looking at here. Overview of play. The possible. 
possible. No, that is a weird find. Is that, is that a P? That looks like a T. Possible actions. This looks like a meteor one. There's there's a lot going on here. We're up to 11 pages so far. Final scoring, 13 pages of rules. Lots of examples. I see lots, lots of graphics in here showing you things. Highlighted text. Looks like a solid rule book, at least for flipping through it. Then we get to the player boards. So there are multiple things you're going to track here, like how many different beers you've tried. This is your backpack. You're going to carry your bottles in. Um, you can drink them when you take a break, or if you meet up with someone, you can cheers them. So that's what this is. These are the award-winning breweries, and if you visit them, you're going to get points for visiting those. There's some little reminders here. This is um, your alcohol level, your breathalyzer. Um, you no, know, once it gets up high enough, you can no longer ride a bike. And as you get even higher, it gets more difficult to ride public transit. And if you get up high enough, you pass out, causing your turn to end early. Um, there's some other things here, like where you're going to keep your cards you've scored and things like that. And this is the cheers track, which the more often you cheers another player and you meet up and you have a beer together, the more points you get. Uh, interestingly, if you don't cheers anyone, you're looking at minus five points. So there's one of these in each of the player colors. Then we've got little tiny counters. Holy cow, are those small. Okay, not impressed by that. Look at the size of those. Like, I think you have a fairly good idea of how big my finger is looking at the rest of this stuff. But like, here. One centimeter total. One centimeter diameter little tokens. So these, you're going to be in the in the player colors and you use to mark if you've been to a brewery. So it's to show you've been there. But man, that's tiny. Um, these are other markers for the first person that gets to a brewery. These are to remind you if you have re-rolls and so on. Um, the beer bottles are some part of the game where you get to different parts of time. You get to choose if you want to take an action, the first person there. If they don't, it stays up. Otherwise, it shows a broken bottle. So you got two pages of these. Man, those are tiny. Really tiny. Ooh, busy looking board, too. I'll save the wood components last. Uh, <laughs> it has crusty Euro coloring to use it. Oh, my God, this is huge. This is a big board. There you go. Okay. Look at the size of this thing. There, can you see all that? Wow. Okay, technically, the board goes this way. Oh, I'm upside down. This way. Try to hold this in a way you can kind of see it. That is a big board. You've got your objectives over on this side, your map of uh, Belgium in the middle with uh, the call out for the town of Brussels here in Brussels Castle where you start the game. Um, these oh, oh, over here are the end game scoring area. On the back is more of a beer map. So not actually useful to the game, but this show the logos for all the different breweries. You got a score track on the top. This is for your victory point cards. But man, look at how busy that is. So this shows it's brewery number 25. And around here shows the actions you can take. And those are really tiny. Um, they look like poker chips, but they're too small. I am concerned about being able to see that from across the board. Um, so like at this particular one, I can't even tell. You can buy beer, I think. Some other ones, you should be able to buy beer and cheese. I, again, I haven't read the rules, so I don't know everything that's going on, but man, that's a busy board. Now, the other thing that's here is the routes between. So every time you go to go between this brewery and this brewery, you have three choices. You can hitchhike, you can take uh, public transit, or you can bike, and it tells you how much time it's going to take. The time is tracked down here on the bottom of this board, and it's one of those games where you take your action, you're going to slide your, point up, your, your marker up, and the person who's in last always goes. So it's one of those games where multiple you might get multiple turns before someone else does. What a big, busy board. So here's the actual start of it. Um, this is showing you that when you're in Brussels, you can literally get anywhere for one. But man, look at how tiny those little symbols are for what you can do at each place. Sheesh. Obviously, this is limited by player count. So that's your main components, except for all this wood. So I'm going to kind of toss some of this back in the box and then move the box out of the way. So here I have the wooden components that come with the game, and there's some really uniquely shaped pieces in here, but nothing overly fancy. So I'm just gonna dump this out. So what we have first off, of course, are beers. Now, Belgians' beers are in stubbies, which is why these don't look like American beer bottles. They're Belgian stubbies. Um, not sure what the blue ones are. 
That might be for tracking something else. Those appear to be some kind of shields. Um, there's your hiker. So yeah, these are in player color. So that's got to be like for tracking your score. There should be more beer types. So there we go. We also have a black beer type. Um, then we have your hikers in different player colors. Oh, I am off the board. Sorry. Looking up at my... So here are the hikers. I think these are, are for tracking possibly your score. Because they are in the different player colors. Your different beer types. So there, and there should be one other player color, which is purple, I think. Yeah, purple. And then there should be a shield in purple. There we go. Oddly, in my set, the pink is wider than the rest, which is just kind of strange. You can't really see it there, but it's a little bit thicker and wider. Odd. I don't think that matters. These are the beers you're going to collect. The other thing is you have cheese that you're going to track on your player board. So everyone gets a little cheese counter to track how much cheese they have. If you eat some cheese, it sobers you up. So there should be four of those. There should be beer counters in each of the colors or the player colors. to track your intoxication level. These are scoring discs, which again are in the player colors. Okay, so no, this is your cheers. So when you've had pints with other players, that's to mark your cheers as you go up and down. Uh, that's to mark your alcohol level. This is for your score in the time track. So there should be two in each color, which are just kind of mixed in. Lot of wood. <laughs> A lot of wood. Purple, there we go. Two in each color. Um, again, these beers are going to go out on the board one on each of the spots. And then you also have cubes to represent the different beers. Oh, there you go, four beer types. There's red also. Um, the rest of this, I'm probably not gonna sort here, but basically when you collect a yellow beer, you're gonna collect this if you're the first person to go to a brewery. So you like get the, get the reward for going there first. If you buy beers, yellow beers, you're gonna use these cubes to mark them in your backpack. Um, that's what the rest of these are for. And then there's also some cubes that are gonna go on your player board which are in the player color. So there's five cubes here for blue would be to mark the various trackers on your player board. So a whole bunch of wood. Nothing says a Euro game, like a whole bunch of wood. There you go. Can't see, oh yes. So again, just different cheese markers, different things that are gonna mark things on your player board in the player colors, as well as four different colors of beer, which I don't know if they represent different styles or if there's anything like that, if it's actually tied in. Whole bunch of cardboard bits. Bag full of wood. All right, the other thing I want to point out while I was going through this, I did notice this is actually a full rules reference, but completely iconography. So what this is actually showing you is the rules for moving between locations, what you do when you get to a location, what happens when you run into other players and you do a cheers, what happens at night. Uh, no, so when you're, when you're camping, when you take the camp action, what happens? Um, what happens when you hit the night phase? And then this one, I'm not even sure <laughs> on this one, but it's showing you all these different symbols. So I'm not even sure what that part is, but wow, look at the icons on that. I understand trying to make a game language independent icon wise, but then you end up with books this thick that have three different languages on every page. <sighs> Icons. So here you've got the uh, mess that is the Belgian beers race. Um, a Euro game with a lot of components, player cards, um, overall quality. I will point this out. This, this is a bit of a disappointment. Um, player board should be a little thicker than that. Two layered would have been really nice, but I'm sure that's asking too much. A lot of iconography in this game. A lot of iconography in this game. Just goes to show you here. A ton of wooden components, baggies to control things, some custom dice. Uh, no discernible box insert, which is just kind of strange nowadays. I'm just so used to seeing them. So here you go. Everything you get in the Belgian beers race. From BYA Games and Grand Gamers Guild. So there you have it. 
a look inside the heavy box of the Belgian Beers Race, a board game about traveling, backpacking, literally backpacking around Belgium to try different beers, featuring some of the best beers in the world, including they actually have a guide that talks about every brewery that's in the game, which is a really neat touch, something cool to have in there that's not even needed for the game. Uh, this is a, I don't even know, like it, it's a traveling game. It's a, you're going to go down different routes. It's not quite route building. It's, it's pick up without the deliverer because you're trying to stop as many places you can and try as many beers and not drink too much. Looks really neat. Component quality, it looks like a Euro. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but man, it looks like a Euro. You've got player boards, you've got lots of icons, you've got a massive game board and a ton of wooden components. Um, score tracker and a unique timing system. This looks really solid, especially for beer fans like me. So I am really looking forward to checking out the Belgian beer race. So thank you for joining me for this unboxing video. If you want to hear my opinion on Belgian Beer Race once I play it, best way to find out is follow me on social media where I can be found as Tabletop Bellhop, one word, pretty much everywhere, every social media site you can find. I'll also be sharing my thoughts on our blog at TabletopBellhop.com and our podcast, the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, which you can find on your podcatcher of choice, including Spotify, iHeartRadio, um, Apple Podcasts, all those places were there. Thank you for joining me with this unboxing. I hope you enjoy it. And I guess the, the most important word at the end of a review of a beer game would have to be cheers.